So welcome to part two of this uh, video. Uh, we are still doing paper 43, May, June 2018. Um, and um, so make sure that you have the right paper in front of you. And we've already done questions one and two. And uh, so I'm Mr. John from explainingmaths.com. So check my website if you have any further questions, but let's not waste too much time and quickly continue with question three. It says the scatter diagram shows the physics marks and the chemistry marks for each of 12 students. And just have a quick look. So chemistry and physics. And as you can see, all the marks are natural numbers or positive integers. Yeah? So you cannot get like half score. You can only get like five points and two points yeah? or eight points and three points. So nothing in between. What type of correlation is shown in the scatter diagram? That's for one point. Well, hopefully you see this. It's going up somehow. It's not a very strong correlation, but don't worry about strong or weak or moderate. It's either positive or negative, or there is no correlation. In this case, positive correlation. And then on the scatter diagram, draw a line of best fit for one point. Now, I don't really like those questions because I may draw my line of best fit slightly different than you. Um, but what you're trying to achieve is to get as many points on your line and roughly an equal amount of points above as below your line. Okay, so you just try the best you can do and I am going to do it like this, a line of best fit. Now, um, again, you may have a different answer there, but I have one, two, three of them on my line, three above, yeah, three below, and some are just below, but almost on the line as well. Okay, find an estimate of the chemistry marks for another student uh, who has a physics marks of four. So you use your line of best fits. If you have four physics marks, you have, yeah, almost two chemistry marks. And considering these are all whole numbers, positive integers, we say two. Okay, question B. A teacher records the number of days, if I just scroll, do it down like this. A teacher records the number of days each of the 24 students in her class are absent. And the frequency table shows the results. So before you continue, let's have a look at that table. So 100% attendance, 10 people, good. Good for them. Uh, one day absent, eight people. We have five days absent, excuse me, one people as well. And you see it in between. Okay. Find the mode, the median, and the mean. Good. Well, let's start with the mode. The mode is the most, uh, let's say, popular value, the one with the highest frequency. And the highest frequency is 10, so the mode will be zero. Okay. So put mode over there. Then the median, the median is that mid value. And you have 24, the head of frequency is 24. Has she has asked 24 people, what is your, uh, when were you absent? And uh, so that mid value, you do n plus one, eh? so 24 plus one over two. So it's 12 and a half. That is the position of your median. So that's not your median, that's the position of your median. Um, so you have to find position 12 and position 13 and then take the mean of those two values to find the median. And again, at spreadingmiles.com, I explain this in more detail. Position 12. Um, so that's 10 already. So that's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then position 12 will be in this group as well as position 13. So the median will be 1 because 1 plus 1 Divided by two is one. Very good. Um, then the mean. The mean takes a little bit longer. By the way, you get five points for this test, so you have time to do it properly. To find the mean, you have to add up all the values divided by the total number of values. But in a frequency diagram, you would do it like 10 times zero plus eight times one plus three times two. Uh, plus 2 times 3, plus 0 times 4, plus 1 times 5. So you multiply the frequency by the number of days, because this means 
Again, zero plus 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 one plus one plus one. So quicker is ten times zero plus eight times one. And all of that you gotta divide by and now careful, you don't divide it by six. No, because how many pieces of information do you have? Twenty-four. Yeah, the frequency, the total frequency is twenty-four. There you go. So let's work that out. You can use a calculator for that if you have to. But let me see, that's uh, zero. So, <coughs> excuse me, eight plus uh, six, 14, plus six, 20, plus zero, 25 over 24. I'm just going to check that if that's correct. 25 over 24, which is then 1.04. Or you leave it as a fraction. That is perfectly fine as well. Of course, let's move on. Um, still doing this question, question C. Three sizes of eggs are sold in a shop. Fantastic. The table shows the number of eggs of each size sold in one day. Let's have a look. So the small eggs between 46 and 52 grams, 78, but those medium eggs are quite popular. And then we have large eggs, also quite popular. Calculate an estimate of the mean, ma uh, mean mass. And that is a question you would expect on a paper four, right? So what do you need to do for those four points? First of all, write down the mid value of each group. Because those 78 eggs are between 46 and 52. So we don't know the, their exact mass. So the best we can do, and therefore it's an estimate, is to use the mid value. So what is the mid value of 46 and 52? Well, if you're not sure, you do 46 plus 52 equals divided by 2. So 49, which is going to say 49 underneath there. So 52, the next group, plus 62 equals divided by 2 equals. So that is 57 over there. And 62 plus 80 divided by 2. So there's no reason to rush. Just do it properly. Okay, so we're going to use that mid value now to find the mean, an estimate of the mean, because we're not 100% sure what the mean is because we don't know the exact pieces of data. Uh, 49 times 78 plus um, 57 times 180 plus... 71 times 162 divided by now again be careful you do not divide it by three because that is not the total frequency the total frequency are the amount of eggs sold 78 uh, plus 180 plus 162 if you would divide it by three you would get a really crazy answer, an egg, I don't know, weighing 50 kilograms or so, okay? Doesn't make sense. No, you should tell yourself, not divide by three, divide by 420. Okay, uh, so one point, this is two points. Let's work out that numerator times 78 plus 57 times 118 plus 71 times 162. I'm just gonna write that down for my examiner. And for myself, actually, not for my examiner, divided by 420. And then I say answer divided by 420 equals, and I'm going to write down some decimals before I round. And then I say to three significant figures, 60.9. Okay, there you go. And does that make sense? Always just have a quick check. Does it make sense? Uh, average, yeah, the mean of being 60. 0.9 grams. Yeah, that does make sense, right? That's roughly in the middle, 60.9, somewhere over there. Beautiful. II, so it still relates to those eggs. On the grid, draw a histogram to show the information in the table. And histogram, as you can see, is all about frequency density. And usually they'll give you one bar to kind of inspire you, like, oh, how do you have to draw a histogram? But now they don't. Ha. So you just got to do it yourself. That's life. Sometimes it's tough. Uh, but okay, it doesn't matter. You can do this. Because what is a histogram? The area of each bar represents the frequency. Okay? So this is not the frequency. We call it frequency density. But the area of a bar equals the frequency. 
So the first bar, what is the width? Let me just scroll up a little bit. So the first bar from 46 to 52. So let's start and do that properly with a sharp pencil and I can't really see it, but that's 46 to 52. So that will be the first bar, the width. But how high will it be? Well, if the width from 46 to 52, that's a width of six. Do you agree with that? So the width of that group is six times the height. So how high should it be? Must equal the frequency. And the frequency is 78. Okay, 78. So how high is it? Will be 78 divided by six. 78 divided by six equals 13. So the height of that first bar is 13. So 13, there you go. And, uh, oh dear, do it properly, John, do it properly. Sorry guys, I, this visualizer in a way, so I can't see it really well. But you go from here to there. Okay, and while I draw my bar, I'm telling you that for a histogram, it will always fit on your grid. Yeah, so those bars will never go longer than what your grid is long. Okay, so don't, if you do that, if you get that, then you've made a silly mistake. Okay, simple as that. Okay, there we go. Um, then the next one, you could shade it, by the way, you don't have to. But the next group from 52 to 62, that is a width of 10. Do you agree? A width of 10. The area is 100, and, sorry, the frequency is 180. Yeah, so width of 10 times the height must be 180. So that height is 180 divided by 10. So 18 up till 62. Back to my graph, 62 and then 18. Now, again, I can hardly see my grid. So you need to do a better job than I'm doing now. Okay, you need to do a better job. I'm not happy with my lines. They're not perfectly, well, they're straight, but they don't go perfectly up perpendicularly. Yeah, but as you can see, the width is different and that is completely normal for a histogram. That's fine. Last group from 62 to uh, 18. So that is a width of 18. I'll work it out over here. So 18 times how high equals the frequency, 162. So the height will be 162 divided by 18, which is nine. And all these beautiful whole numbers, you just know you are acing this exam, don't you? Oh, there. Right, and indeed those bars will always fit on your grid and you will always use, let's say, the entire grid, okay? So those three bars should not all be tiny, tiny, tiny here. Again, you're doing something wrong. There should be one using almost the entire grid, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Oh, by the way, my fingernails, look at those. Uh, they're quite short, but let's move on. Question four. It is about, I think, probability. Let's find out. The diagram shows two sets of cards. So let's have a look, set A. It's got a one, a one, a two, a two, and a two. And B has a zero, a one, a one, a one, and a two. And if I just have a quick look at those points, it's three points, three points, one point. So that will be some further probability there, not a straight, you know, one step uh, answer. I'll have to do some work for it because they give me some time. Jojo chooses two cards at random from set A without replacement. Okay, that of course is super important. So if Jojo takes a card, puts it aside, does not go back into uh, the bag with cards. Find the probability that the two cards have the same number. Okay, so the same number could be um, a one and a one, right? That is the same number. Or a two and a two. Those are your two possibilities of getting the same number. So let's work out the first one, a one and a one. What is the chance of getting a one? That will be two out of 
five. And so now this one card is gone. One out of four. Okay, so try to understand uh, where those numbers come from. And I very, I deliberately emphasize when I say and, yeah, one over four. Or, yeah, again, I emphasize that deliberately, two and a two. So that will be a chance of three out of five and a two again. So if one, two is gone, you'll have left two out of four. There you go. Perfect. And that's why you get three points, yeah, because you have to really think carefully about this question. So let's work that out. That is two over uh, 20. You can use a calculator for this, by the way. Yeah? Plus six over 20. So eight out of 20. Yeah? Four out of 10. Two out of five. It's all good. Uh, you don't have to simplify probability. Okay. If you do, it's fine. But then do it properly. Jojo replaces the two cards. Okay. So we have all the cards back in the box. Uh, there we go. Again, for three points, by the way. So let's find out, what do we do? Kylie then chooses one card at random from set A and one card at random from set B. Find the probability that the two cards have the same number. Okay, so for Kylie, that could be the same number is a one and a one, right? Because she can get a one out of set A and a one out of set B. Or if she gets a two out of set A and a two out of set B, then she will also have the same number. That's what they want, right? Find probability scores of the same number. Yes, correct. Now set B also has a zero, but set A doesn't. So that's not gonna be very helpful if you want to have the same number. So what is the chance of a one and a one? So a chance of a one in set A is two out of five and a one out of set B is going to be three out of five. Or a two out of set uh, A, which is a chance of three over five, and one out of five, what's the chance? Uh, that's the chance of having a two in set B. So six over 25 plus three over 25, I get nine out of 25. Oh, can you see that? There you go. Perfect. Question for one point then, who is the most likely to choose, uh, excuse me, I start, uh, yeah, that's my Dutch accent, uh, I'll try again. Who is the most likely to choose two cards that have the same number, show all your working? Wow, for one point. Well, one person has a chance of eight out of 20, and the other person has a chance of nine out of 25. And what you need to do is make those uh, denominators the same, so you can compare the numerator, okay? So eight out of 20, um, let's do it out of 100. I think that's the lowest common multiple. I'm not, I'm not really sure, but out of 100, that's like a percentage as well. So that times five, so that's 40 out of 100, 40% chance. And Kylie, uh, so, uh, so that is times five. To get it out of 100, we times it by four. So 36 out of 100. So who's more likely to get two uh, of the same uh, numbers? That will be Jojo. Question B for three points again. We have another set 